Welcome back, guys. I trust you've been staying safe. Now, for the Christian fraternity, the word of God and the work of God are things that they take very seriously. I'm a Christian myself, and Christianity is built around the foundations of love for one another and neighborliness. So, it is very surprising to have a situation where there would be conflict in the church to the point that an assistant pastor will decide that he has a beef with his senior pastor and it degenerates to the point that he physically confronts him on the church premises, particularly at the altar of God himself. It gets physical and in the physical encounter, it becomes a physical situation where the assistant pastor decided that at the altar of God in the church, he would end the life of the senior pastor and then go ahead to just set him ablaze. This is what has happened in Nigeria as at the 26th of February, 2024. And I'm struggling to appreciate the facts of this case. But I'm here to share them with you. Maybe you can make me appreciate it. So, the whole story started prior to the actual fateful day of the event. Where the assistant pastor by name Ola Lekan Ogundipi. Let's just call him Lekan. This assistant pastor known as Lekan seemed to have gotten very notorious in the church to the point that it is alleged he was having several amorous relationships with women in the church and if you know how the church system is particularly in africa for most churches they really regard their pastors and assistant pastors to the point that sometimes some women even respect them more than their partners so it was no surprise that the allegation against Lekan was that he was in several amorous relationships with several women in the church. And this was causing a rift in the church because these women are coming from homes and families. So if you are sort of bundling them up like that, definitely it means that you are breaking up somebody's home. And that is not something that the church should be taking for granted. So there were several complaints against Lekan to the point that some of these complaints actually got to the senior pastor by name Most Superior Evangelist Ulagbaju Morris Badi Fadehan. Yeah, I know the name is long, so let's just call him Morris. Now, the complaints got to Pastor Morris and he was really concerned because these were not the first time that these complaints were coming up against the assistant pastor Lekan. Now, it is alleged that at a point in time, there have been confrontations between some men and Lekan, and Lekan also seems to be very aggressive and very seemingly prone to violence to the point that it had become a known reputation about him that this guy seems to be the black sheep of the pastors in the church. But my question is, then how did he become a pastor in the first place? Because pastors are supposed to eschew a virtue that is Christ-like in quotes, where they are demonstrating the expected meek behavior of Christianity that is fit enough for them to be granted the mantle of leadership to lead the flock to Christ. That is the expectation I would have of a pastor. So I don't understand how such a seemingly unstable guy would end up being put in the position of a senior of an assistant pastor or assistant evangelist in this church and the name of the church is the celestial church of christ grace of comfort parish now this was what was transpiring and it turns out that there was another woman in the church by name mami ewa now, Mami Ewe's case seemed to be the catalyst that set this, the whole thing off on the 26th of February. Because 
although there have been several incidents in the past with regards to assistant Pastor Lekan and his alleged amorous relationship with women and conflicts around these things, it seemed like it was being managed to an extent, although it wasn't being well managed. But the whole thing came to a head where Mami Ewa, also a member in the church, went and lodged a complaint against assistant pastor Lekan. And she made this complaint to the senior pastor, telling him that Lekan is going around peddling a story that seems to suggest that himself and Mami Ewa were an item or are still an item. And Mami Ewa seems to be against that peddling because allegedly, according to her, she doesn't think that that was the case. It is unclear whether they had something in the past and maybe they broke up and Lekan wasn't ready to let go and Mami Ewa wasn't also ready to continue. It's unclear. But this seemed to be the bone of contention to the point that things almost got very physical between Mami Ewa and Lekan. And as such, Mami Ewa went and informed the senior pastor. At this point, the senior pastor had actually had enough. So, it's alleged that he took a decision that it is about time that assistant pastor Lekan is brought to book because it seems he has been able to get away with so much damage in the church and him being the leader, he needed to put his feet down and exact some justice. So, the rumor is that Pastor Morris was actually already making moves to get Lekan removed from the church. And Lekan apparently knew of this. So, he also did not like this senior pastor because he also felt that the senior pastor was trying to undermine his growth in the church. Very funny, right? Suddenly, it has become like a political game. But this is the church. Hmm, interesting. That is what is alleged out there. Then, on this fateful day of the 26th of February, 2024, after Mami Ewa had made this complaint to the senior pastor, Morris, it's alleged that the senior pastor sought the company of assistant pastor Lekan and gave him a heavy dose of direct confrontation verbally, ironing out the fact that he's creating problems and that he shouldn't continue to do these things. And it became a heated argument to the point that it's alleged Lekan decided to take it a step further when his violent tendencies kicked in and it quickly degenerated into something else. At this time, the senior pastor was actually at the altar designated for the highly spiritual works of the church, within the church. So he was standing at the altar of Christ in the church. But Lekan didn't make any cognizance of that. He had no regard for the so-called sanctity they had ascribed to that particular location in the church. He just pounced on the senior pastor and it escalated into a fisticuff situation. The senior pastor Morris reportedly also did not back down because at this point it would seem more like a case of self-defense. So he also sought to defend himself. But then, unfortunately, it seemed the rage of assistant pastor Lekan Ugundipi was more ruthless than the resolve of the senior pastor Morris and Lekan was able to overpower him and ended him right at the altar inside the church. It didn't end there. He moved on, got some chemicals, got some stuff, and then set the pastor ablaze. At which point, he then ran out and raised an alarm that he came and saw the pastor on fire and that people should come and help him save the situation when in actual fact he knew that he had done this but he went outside and he was pretending that is the devil right there if this is true 
That is the devil right there. And he is wearing the cassock of an assistant pastor and unaliving his senior pastor at the altar of Christ inside the church building. How, 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 how tricky can this get again? This is such an irony. And I ask myself, so these members who go and sit at the feet of such a person to listen to him, hoping to find Christ through this person, where is this guy taking them? Well, that is a question for another day. But then, it has been reported that at the point that Lekan was pretending and raising the alarm that people should come and attend to this pastor, some of the people he was trying to convince noticed that he had some scratches on him, which suggested he might have been in a confrontation or a struggle of a sort. And there were also some stains of blood in his dress. So they then confronted him as to whether he isn't actually involved in whatever he's raising the alarm on. He panicked and they pushed him a bit and he confessed. Then they raised an alarm, the police came and they picked him up, arrested him. He confronted, he, he confessed there and there after they confronted him. And then the police whipped up the remains of the senior pastor and then just took him to the morgue. And just like that, assistant pastor Ola Lekan Ugundipi had soiled the church of God with the blood of the senior pastor over him being rebuked over his seemingly amorous relationships with some women in the church, allegedly. And like I was saying, how does this happen in the church? Because for me, I'm raising two key questions. With a track record like this, how did Ola Lekan, Ugundipi or Lekan become a senior pastor, uh, an assistant pastor in this church. What was the, the basis of that meritocracy that was granted him to grow to become this assistant pastor? How? I, I don't get it because nothing about his conduct screams Jesus Christ in any way. Nothing about his conduct screams that he is worthy, in quotes, of being appointed as a leader in a Christian society to mentor some members or speak or preach to some members. Christianity is not just about talking about the word of God. It starts with the character of the person initiating the conversation. At least, that is what I think. And the second bit is, how can such a person be able to do this in the house of God? Now, the members who are going to sit in church to listen to these people or some of these people or somebody like this assistant pastor, what are they doing to also assert themselves to also validate their own journey religiously in finding their Christ or finding Jesus Christ? Because you can't leave it to the pastors. It's evident. Some are very genuine, but you may eventually meet some like this assistant pastor here and you wouldn't know. I think it's about time that people work on their spiritual journey and build on their spiritual life with the goal of finding things out themselves and not relying on a betweener in the person of a pastor or an evangelist or whatever. Because sometimes these people might have their own challenges which some of them might even be failing in and might be in a worse position than you, the member, thinking that you are not worthy. As it stands now, this is an evolving case. Lekan is in the grips of the law. And I'll be following. If there are any updates, you know, I'll bring them to you. But what do you think about this? What's your take on this case? How is the church run in wherever you find yourself in the world watching this? Let's have a conversation. You agree with some of the questions I'm asking? If so, let me know. Let's dialogue on this. If you don't agree, I respect it. Let me know. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what you think could have triggered Lekan to this point. And RIP to the senior evangelist, Morris, and my condolences to his family. I hope he finds peace.
But for me, I also hope that he finds justice or he's granted justice and that the assistant pastor faces the full rigors of the law if he's found guilty. Subscribe to the channel if you are yet to do so. Thanks for watching this video. I have several other interesting videos, some from Africa, some from various parts of the world. Make time, watch them, give your comments, let's have a dialogue, learn from them and stay safe out there. I'll catch you on the next one.